We come to still more pointy bits. Um, uh, oh, that is sweet, isn't it? Nice little spear there. These, these are basically um, foot soldiers' weapons, they do. If you're old enough like me to know the saying, I don't give you tups for your chances, this was these guys. Because they were paid tups a day and they didn't care whether they got killed or anything else. So that's where the old saying come into us, we don't give you tups for your chances. But they were thrown in because they were peasants, they, nobody really worried about what happened to them. <laughs> oh, look at the skill in that. Oh, yes, well poked, sir, well poked. Oh, yes, yes. Hold it one. Ready? Oh, yes. 180! Oh, look at this. Oh, you're going well there. Yes, got that. Oh, well done. Yes, yes. One more. Yes. One more. Oh, well. Make it a good one. Ready? Come on now. Go careful. I don't want you to strain yourself. All right? Ready, steady, brace. Oh, lovely. Well done. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we've got through nearly all our pointy bits now. And we are coming on to, we're still on peasant weapons. Can't we get something a little bit more fancier in a moment, please? Where has that been? As you can see, this is... No, no. This is loosely called a hay fork. Or tried, as you can see, peasants. I hate peasants. Oh. God, dirty, smelly things, peasant. There we go. You sure you've got the MVQ to use this? Oh, yes, not bad, Tom. Yeah, not bad, yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Quite, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, it's quite flexible, and he hasn't hurt himself at all. You sure you're okay? Splinter? your contract to go after it. Right, now we've got, oh, oh I do, I like this one. This is the English bill. This was, the English were famous for this. As again, an agricultural weapon. If you see the curved bit, that's just called a bill hook, and they decided to turn it into a weapon of war, put it on the end of a pole. We call these pole arms, not because they're on long poles, but the word pole comes from the old Anglo-Saxon word that means head. As you can see, it's quite a nice varied weapon. It's got a pointy bit at the front for stabbing. And it's got a nice hooky bit for hooking. See, there's your stabby bit. Now, you could hook it. See, that's it. If it was on the launch back, you could also hook it. Oh, yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. Not bad. What do you reckon? Um, three points for that one? Two points, only two. Um, you're not hitting him hard enough. No, you shut your mouth. Nobody asked you. Stabby bit there. 
again. This allows you to keep your enemy, especially a smelly peasant, away from you because your nice long pole at the end of there can also be used as a quarter star. Just to add a little point there, actually if it was a quarter star, which was just a long pole really, there was more people killed by the quarter staff than any other weapon in the medieval period. Because it was just so easy, that old better Stephen. Nine, nine and a half, what do you reckon panel? Eight and three quarters? Eight more, oh, yes, we're getting there. Yep, getting there. Still haven't got that ten though. Oh, the pole axe. Oh dear, what a sweet looking thing that is. This, ladies and gentlemen, was one of the main weapons now we're up into the medieval period. Knight's weapon. You can see it's a combination axe, spear and hammer. Very nice too. Some of these had a spike on the end that you could use against the foot or the face. Because they wore so much armour, you couldn't readily cut it. So what you tried to do was crush him. You had a nice blunt force trauma there and again can we actually get this victim a nice drop of water please because he seems to be failing a little bit we don't want him to fall that's much better thank you i mean we don't want these people in the audience complaining that they're not getting their money's worth oh another glaive oh look does that work properly you're not going to hurt your hand or anything don't worry, sir, there's no splinters. Don't worry. You sure you're okay? It's not too hot? No. Right, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Ready when you are then, sir? Ready, step, go! Oh, well cut. Well cut. And, oh, a nice one to the midriff there. Oh, a nice one to the back. Oh, and to the kidneys. Oh, lovely. Nice cut to the back again. And he's going for the head cut. Oh, well done, Peter. Oh, and a leg cut. Oh, nicely done. Got a hamstring in. Oh, right up the Jacob's ladder. <laughs> oh, a nice hamstring there, Pete. That is, see, Stephen, that's how it's done. That get you the ten, you see. <laughs> no, a bit naff. Um, have we have we any more entertainment for the boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Is it okay? Yes? Uh, right, we're going for the cut things now. I think these are called swords. Right, we start off with the Roman period, ladies and gentlemen. It's the gladius. Short stabbing sword. Used when they had the shield wall. Much easier for stabbing, close com com close quarter combat. So we've actually got to get him settled. You've got to imagine now they're all fighting in a line behind shields. Nice, easy, stabby sword, this. Whereas the opponents of the Romans used longer swords, this is what gave the Romans the uh, advantage of the stabbing sword. Again, as you can see, these are nice and sweet. Short cuts there, short stabs. He's not making himself, you're not sweating or anything, are you? You're not, you're not, you're not just starting, right, lovely. Right, here we go. Nice stab there again to the midriff. Um, you haven't gone for the face, I noticed. No. You know, you're fighting and hurting yourself, the perspiration coming off of him once you scrap yourself with blood. Right, okay. Right, we make sure he's all set up, okay? That was the gladius then, ladies and gentlemen. This is right.